Guys, we're getting back around to the warning button designed by Dirk Pinkerton, done by uh, Beyond EDC in their Terra Mundi line. This is the knife that the lock is part of the pivot. So without any further ado, we're going to take a look at this from above. We're going to get the good stuff. We're going to take it apart so you can see the lock and we'll talk about a couple of bad things. So let's turn this around. So I know there's a lot of you guys that are watching the intro and you're like, Mike, that's not a new lock. There's other locks. Like this is a very, very good lock. It is definitely different than the one that CRKT uses their deadlock because it's kind of got a, a multi-plate system in it. Uh, this is the Terra Mundi Knives warning button, as you can see here. Now this is M390 uh, titanium. This thing is incredible. So we're going to get this out of the way. I just wanted to show you, this comes in an awesome, awesome little case. These cases are great. There's a lot of knives that come in these cases. They hold up really, really well. So let's go ahead and we'll get some specs. So you are looking at an overall length of 7.25 inches, uh, blade length of 3.125 inches. It is done in a Warren Cliff style blade here. Uh, this is a very, very thin grind on this. Titanium handles. Now, this is listed as a button lock, but technically it's a little different. It is a button lock of sorts, but it's not like the one you expect to see. And we're going to take this apart. And I'm going to show you how it looks on the inside. Um, this is a flipper. It's done by Beyond EDC and it is designed by Dirk Pinkerton. Now, I've loved a lot of Dirk's knives. So, Let's do a quick size comparison. First knife is just what I have in my pocket, the PMP Knives Aries, which is a great, great knife. Next knife is Benchmade 940. You can see this is kind of a short and squat knife, but really broad blade with a lot of cutting surface. Uh, so there you go. That's a knife most of you guys are going to know for size reference. And your final knife, as always, is the legendary Chris Reeves Sabenza Large 21. You can see a good bit longer in the blade area, but I got to say, this thing is an amazing knife. So let's get this out of the way, talk about this, and take the lock apart so you can see it. So now let's talk about this knife. So I didn't do a lot of serious heavy cutting with it, but I did cut a lot of cardboard. And I tell you, there's a lot of things going for this knife. It is a very thin behind the edge long drawn grind on this wide blade so it comes down and transitions really well not just that it's thin behind the edge but it stays thin behind the edge for a long stretch of that you can see here so that lets it cut better it's not just the behind the edge thickness it's how long it stays thinner behind the edge that really gives you that slicing um action on this thing is great the m390 blade has held up the finish on it has held up. You can see there's some little minor scuffs and scratches on it, but I didn't do a lot of heavy abrasive material cutting, just cardboard and things like that, like you would on a day to day. Um, the feel in hand, amazing. These titanium scales have been lightened very, very well. And the fact is just like a button lock, this is ambidextrous, this little pinch in the pivot. Now the lock on this is technically considered a button lock, but it's part of the pivot. So I like to call it an integral uh, plunger or an integral pivot lock. Um, and uh, we'll take that apart and I'll show you what it's what what all's going on in it. Jimping on this, the jimping on this is just brilliant. It is some of the best jimping on any knife. It's really sharp, really aggressive. You're not going to come sliding off of that. Definitely, definitely feel good. If you're in this and you're cutting this way, it is great. In a pinch grip, you're on it like this. You're not going to slip even if your hands are slippery. The titanium scales have been lightened, so this does not have a real heavy feel in pocket. If you were to look, the weight is... Sorry about that. I don't know why I said if you were to look. At any rate, the, the weight on it is 2.9 ounces, so it's just at like 3 ounces. Reversible pocket clip. The hardware on it is beautiful. You've got three standoffs, so they kind of act like a partial backspacer. I like that. A lot of times guys will just do one and then leaves this completely open. And I have to admit, I am a big fan of a backspacer or a partial backspacer because it keeps keys and stuff from getting into dinging up your edge. Now, the really cool thing about this, on top of the fact that Dirk's designs are always great, really squat, really aggressive into the cut, is this new lock. And this lock is, like I said, a lot like a button lock but a little bit different and then on top of that the way this is put together is really cool now i'm going to take this apart for you and show you so let me get this ready i'm going to get my tools together and i'm going to show you exactly what i'm talking about because it's a very very interesting concept just a quick little step in uh that i forgot to mention before we go to the disassembly 
I think that this lock allows you a much cleaner look than a standard button lock. I think I mentioned at the end, but I just wanted to make sure. That's one of the coolest things about this is how clean it makes the knife look. There's no break in the lines. It's just so clean. So back to what I was saying. So unlike other button lock knives where you can see your plunger is right there and it sits and it drops into that groove and it's all exposed and it allows things to get in there, this is all enclosed inside the knife. So really, really simple to take apart. So it's kind of hard to do from closed, but from open, you can see how that button stands up. You basically just put a little pressure on it. There we go. You break that loose and this piece unscrews. And then that leaves you access to this, which is the second part of the pivot. So this is just the top button. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the body screws out, just T6 screws. These are steel screws, by the way. Uh, I didn't mention that. So the hardware on this is steel with the exception of the actual button, which is titanium, has been anodized, uh, has been anodized blue. So the nice thing about this mat, you guys can't see it off camera. There's magnets on this mat. There's a spot where these screws can just sit and not go anywhere. So now... I've done this two different ways. You can actually get a screwdriver and put in here, push down on the button, then get in the slot of that. But for me, I have got a spanner that works really well. It's from my Olamic knives. And so basically you can just get in here, push that button down, get in those two little slots. If I can get in the two little slots, there we go. And you just start spinning this around and this is threaded in there just like the button was, and then when you get it loose enough, well, I haven't gotten it loose enough. We'll just go ahead and keep going here. Um, I'm not in the, give me a second. Sorry about that. I had to be able to see what I was doing. So it's kind of hard to do it from this angle, but basically you just get that and you break it loose and you can see that spinning is coming off. And then from here, Let's put this off to the side. From here, you can kind of see your button is in here and there's a slot there. If I push down on this, then I can take this off and you can see your bearing race and your actual lock. So your bearing race is just a very thin row of bearings, but it keeps it tight and like locked up against that bearing race. And then inside here is just simply a plunger and a spring right here and they slot into these open and closed positions on the lock. So this is basically your lock right here on the internals here. Really, really cool concept. They did a really good job of getting this milled in here. It's part of the pivot and it just basically slides back down in here and then just put it back together in the reverse order you did. You just wanna make sure you've got everything lined up and you can get your spring tension down in here. The best way to do it is to kind of get this in position and then push that down and there you go. And then you can put your top scale back on. It is a very simple disassembly. Um, like I said, once you figure out that you got, you can get something in that slot. So let me get this put back together and I'll show you the couple little bad things I found about this, but I do love this lock. This lock is very, very clever. It is a definite, a definite new style of button lock that removes a lot of the problems that button locks have of like stuff getting in them and stuff like that, especially when you look at how the bearings sit down in there. And it's it's a large bearing surface and you get a unique feel from that. So yeah, let me get this pet back together for you. And I'll tell you about the couple little bad things I have noticed. Sorry, I just realized you guys might wanna be able to see the reassembly. So it's just the same. It's really easy for, for something like this. You just basically have gotta get this lined up. You gotta thread that first piece in and then you can get it in pretty tight by hand um, and then just finish it up with either, a, like I said, a flathead screwdriver, just push down in on that and get it in. But you can almost get it fully tight by hand. And then all you need to do is just either find a spanner that will fit it or just use a screwdriver. Like I said, the hardest part is just lining it up and getting the parts in there. So once you get that as tight as it needs to be, which we're right about there, there's no play. You can just take this piece and screw it back on.
So it's not, it's a lot like a button lock, but it's definitely different. And then you just tighten this down on until it stops. And then your button lock is back together and then you just put your body screws back in. So with all the coolness of this, there's only a couple small things about this knife. Um, two small, small things. That is the first one. If you happen to be someone that rides the lock button all the way down, instead of just letting it fall, it will bounce out of detent and because it is so smooth. Um, typically, I typically I find myself having to make sure that I hold the button long enough to let it drop back in. Um, but like if you just if you just push the button and then let it fall, you're fine. Uh, there is only one other real thing about this. This is another knife that is a little thin, and it cut it gets out of the alignment of the cut. If you look, this is my natural way I want to hold this knife, and it can'ts over. And it has it's nothing against the design. It has a lot to do with the size of my hands. If this knife was a little broader or a little thicker, I think it would not want to rotate through as much. And there is one final thing that I've heard people complain about. If you are aggressive in a pinch cut, it will come loose. Unlike a lot of button locks that it takes a lot more travel. Like if I've got this in a pinch grip and I bump it, it's not gonna come, it, it'll get loose, but it's not gonna come all the way all the way unlocked. This doesn't have near as much travel on that lock. So if you are in a pinch grip and you pull that button, it can close on you. Just something to think about. Typically when I was using as a pinch grip, I was clear up here because that's like, I'm, I'm typically pinching the blade as opposed to the scale. But if you happen to be someone that pinches it back here, it could close on you. That's the only thing that I see wrong with the lock. Other than that, I think this is going to change a lot of things for a lot of folks in the knife world because it gives it so much cleaner a look. Um, I love button locks. S sorry about that. I was saying I love button locks, but then you have that extra piece here and a pivot. So it just kind of looks a little more cluttered. This just looks clean. You just have a pivot and then body screws. So it, it's kind of it's kind of cool that it makes the lock look hidden. But let's turn this around, do some final thoughts. I'll send you out about your day right after you guys hear from Coffee Brand Coffee. I know that no one likes to watch ads in the middle of a video. I don't like putting them in, but I do know that I gotta support what I do here. So I partnered with companies that I know I can trust. And today's sponsor is Coffee Brand Coffee. They're delivering quality coffee, freshly roasted on demand, ground to order and delivered to your door. And they're not doing anything political. So you don't have to worry about a company that you're that you're supporting that is supporting causes that you might not agree with because they don't support any causes. They just simply take the money and put it back into making a better product. So I would appreciate if you both support their new small business and my channel by checking out Coffee Brand Coffee and looking at their offerings. Use the link below and my coup or my coupon code crazy sharp on their website it's crazy sharp all one word capital c capital s let's get back to this there you go guys awesome awesome knife. and not only is the lock the cool part about it this thing is absolutely amazing in hand and the way it cuts like i said didn't do a lot of heavy cutting because this is not mine and it was supposed to go back up for resale i don't know i may have to talk to the guy that sent this to me and say hey i don't think you can sell this do you want to take it back or do you want to keep it here um so because it has done a good bit of cutting. I'm not sure if he could resell this at this point with the scuffs and stuff on it. So at any rate, guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, I have got a bunch of ways. I know I made you guys watch a Coffee Brand Coffee ad. I also have got uh, Tempered Trail. They are a channel sponsor. Both of them have links down below with discount codes built in. I have a coupon code of Crazy Sharp, all one word, saves you 5% at Ferrum Forge Knife Works and Rosecraft Blades. If you want to support another way, I've got an Amazon store down below. That Take that link, pin it to your browser, use it for any shopping that you want to do on Amazon. It does not cost you anything extra and it definitely supports the channel. And the final way is I have got a membership down below. You can click on it, pick a tier that fits you, but everyone gets er access to my Gilded server, which is just like Discord. Everyone gets early access to videos. Everyone gets exclusive content. Baseline and premium guys are entered into giveaways that I do on the Gilded server, and the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series behind the paywall here on YouTube. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I'll see you in the next video.